Welcome. In some denominations, you'd make a trip to the pastor's study for answers to the really tough questions. Well, let's see what we can do here. Hello, and Mary Meet. Depending on how you got here, I'm Iden Odinson, High Priest of the Temple of Gaia, or Bishop Cal Lippitt of the Universal Episcopal Church. Either way, welcome to midweek in a very different pastor study. Yeah, I'm not dressed formally today. And fine. I don't, I hope I don't need those accoutrements to do my work, although it helps, I know. I remember in the Air Force there were some lieutenant colonels, colonels, even generals, who, well, quite bluntly, the only thing that The only th reason why anybody paid them any attention was what jewelry ha they had on their shoulders or, or their collars. Yeah. And I remember one describing one as, well, never mind. Then there was Colonel Dave Bassett, who I once described as he could command in Bermuda shorts. Yeah. He was one of those people who did not need. It helped, but he did not need to lean on the trappings of office to exercise his office. No, he was that much of a leader. He was that much of a commander. He was much of a commander, that much of a manager, that much of everything right. And it was my pleasure to serve under him as his exec officer. Besides, my shirt that I'm wearing today I think is appropriate. I'm retired. Go around me. Yeah. I cut my ties with my mundane world employer. Began my retirement on the 1st of July, and among other things that gives me the opportunity to be more regular here and to not be in such a hurry up panic and to be able to actually do some things. It also means that I can say what I want. No, not what I want. What I need to and not have to worry about repercussions if somebody over me in the mundane world disagrees. And that's fine. Because truth is truth. Even if nobody listens. Lies are lies even if everybody listens. And you know, we've got some trouble coming. Unless, of course, you want to say that the trouble is right here and now, and I won't disagree with you on that. Yeah. And I'm going to give you some, some examples. And you can find similar examples right where you are. Look and you'll see. The thing that started me on this was a recent incident in Hawthorne, California, a town that I used to think was a place where I'd like to live. Well, there was a company there that I wanted to work for. Never happened. I did have a very dear friend who lived there. But recently, a gentleman was walking his dog in a residential neighborhood. And 
he saw some police there. Apparently, they were doing a drug bust. He takes out his camera and starts making a video of them. Now, I'd like to point out, walking his dog, minding his own business, in a public place, something that was open for public view, everybody could see it, but they arrest him for making a video with his phone of something that everybody who was there could see. That's bad enough. Then, as they were handcuffing him, his dog did what every dog would do, try to defend his master. And the police shot his dog. And I hope that that trigger-happy poor excuse for a police officer not, doesn't just lose his shield. And I'm thinking that perhaps if there are too many excuses being made for that, then perhaps somebody needs to look into the Hawthorne, California Police Department. I can tell you one thing for sure. I'm not moving to Hawthorne, California. I'm not going to set up a business there. I'm not going to establish a church there. I'm not going to... Nope. Not in Hawthorne, California, as long as it's that kind of a town. Is that the problem? It's a symptom of it. Recently, a lieutenant colonel in the United States Air Force and a fighter pilot. I'm sure somebody wants to rattle off a graduate of this and that or holds what kind of a degree and all that. He was tried by a court-martial, found guilty, and sentenced. And a three-star general the so-called reviewing authority, set it all aside. Now, I'm going to ask you something. Some of the people say that having a review authority outside of the chain of command, particularly in the case of certain crimes, would undermine the chain of command. Oh? Well, don't you think there should be a review which would be an honest review and not somebody covering up a flying buddy or viewing things through what do you want to call it khaki colored glasses uh, looking at somebody's wonderful flying record or how many enemy planes he shot down or how many hostile fire missions he flew and Oh, we can't. Then suddenly they... It's rape. And he's going to get off the hook. I don't think so. Now, I got a question. If the chain of command can do this, would you want your daughter to serve there? Would you want your sister to serve there? What if your wife were talking about joining the military? Would you want her to serve there? Okay. In several churches there have been abuse scandals, major ones. The Roman Catholic Church is not the only one. They're the, just the one that the press likes to cover so much. Well, I can tell you about an Episcopal bishop who was convicted for 
doing nothing when he was a rector. And then after he got off the hook on some technicalities, he was told a non-binding resolution by the House of Bishops. Simply put, just resign and go away. Okay, please, now. And unfortunately, he did so. He chose to retire. The secular statute of limitations had run out quite some time before. Okay. How about you? I know about me. Yeah. Who I am and what I do makes me a them. What's a them? One who ain't one of us. And I can guarantee you that there is something that will make you a them. If the others choose to call you one of them. Because you're not a part of their little group in that aspect. And each and every one of us has the possibility of becoming one of them. We need to show that we can be trusted. That is a principle. Now, when we're talking about police officers, when we're talking about military officers, when we're talking about members of the clergy, including these guys that go around wearing the kind of collar that you saw me wearing last week, I'll be wearing tomorrow for a wedding that I'm doing. Yeah. And, okay, what if you're in the National Guard and somebody says something about National Guard people? What if you're working for a particular company and somebody says something about that company. Yeah. We need to show that we can be trusted. And especially those who are visible about it. Yeah. We need to be able to trust that policemen are not going to just be trigger happy or take time out from enforcing some heavyweight narcotics laws to arrest somebody who's been videotaping them, videotaping them doing something that anybody walking down the street can see. We need to know that our military leaders are going to be held accountable for what they do. We need to know that the people we are trying to trust look at the, ch the abuse scandals that pop up in public schools we need to be able to trust the people that we're supposed to be able to trust. And, conversely, we need to do our business in a way that we let people know that we are indeed trustworthy. And that's the thought I want to leave you with for this week. Yeah. Each one of us has a standard to follow. Each one of us has a benchmark that we've got to 
we've got to hold ourselves to. Because we can't afford to think any of us in any way can be above the rules. And with that, maybe we can make some progress. Blessed be. I'll see you next week. This has been a presentation of the Wise Ones Net. Merry part and blessed be.